What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Brother Man Games here, and welcome to a new Let's Play series that I will be doing of the classic Rome Total War. I love this game, I love this series, this is pretty much the game that got me really into history, especially ancient and classical history and whatnot. Uh, as I did say in one of my Vampire the Masquerade videos, that I recorded that I would be doing a new series as the Bioshock one is on is on an indefinite hold sorry so I figured I'd like to do something kind of different and play a strategy game uh, especially one as good as this one so yeah I just installed this game recently so we don't really have any of the other factions that can be unlocked or even the ones that you can't even unlock at all added here uh, but uh, you know I do want to play as a Roman uh, faction for a first let's play in this series you know like you're playing a game like Rome Total War and you don't even play or like or do a Roman faction first it's like you're ordering a cheeseburger without the cheese you know what I mean um, so we pretty much just have three choices you got the house of the of Julii, House of the Brutii, and the House of the Scipii. So it all pretty much depends on who you really feel like fighting. They're all fairly similar in terms of, you know, unit composition. Uh, it's just, you know, the color's different. And like, if you're the Julii, you know, you're here in the north, you're pretty much going to be fighting Gauls and Germans and the British and going into Spain. If you're like the Broody Eye, you're down here. You're pretty much going into Greece and then into uh, Anatolia here and then into like the Middle East or even up in Eastern Europe. Skippy Eye, uh, Sicily, maybe here, and then like Africa. Uh, the Broody Eye have probably one of the better starts because I'll explain once we get in. Uh, Julii, you know, they fight fairly easy enemies. Uh, I want to play as the Skippy Eye. I know most people have probably played the Julii Eye before. I know many a true nerd did a phenomenal series on the Broody Eye. Uh, if you definitely want to watch that one, definitely check it out. But please also stay and watch mine. I promise I will probably play somewhat differently than him. But one of the reasons I feel I want to play as them is A, they're blue, and B, they don't really get as much love compared to, you know, the Julii because they have so many famous uh, Romans in them, like, you know, Julius Caesar, Augustus, and then his line uh, and dynasty of emperors. Uh, the Brutii, they have pretty much the two Brutuses, you know, uh, the guy that drove out the kings and the one that assassinated Julius Caesar. Um, they would be called Junii in this case. Kind of a... a uh, inaccuracy there. Uh, Scipii. The Scipii, though, they're famous especially in the early to mid-Republican period. Uh, very much famous for fighting Hannibal and the Carthaginians, which makes sense as that's who we'll pretty much be fighting. Uh, but in real life, they were called the House of Cornelia. Uh, just, again, just in mild inaccuracies. It's not really that big of a deal. In terms of difficulty... Uh, I think I'm just gonna play on hard. I haven't really played, uh, Total War in quite a while, but I want at least a little bit of a challenge rather than just have it completely easy on normal and hard. And yeah, so we're gonna manage all settlements, follow AI characters. I'm actually, I usually leave the battle time limit off because I, I just like to make it a bit more realistic in that like fights should last as long as they have to but I don't think we're ever really going to you know ever really run out of time in the battles because they can end fairly quickly so yeah just not gonna turn that on and yeah we're gonna do a long campaign uh, become the supreme ruler of Rome and control at least 50 provinces so, yeah, uh, I, I generally like to play the long campaigns on this one because I feel that 
you know, you, you, f you, it's, it, you get fairly rushed during a short campaign. Like, you know, just holding like 15 provinces and destroying Carthage and Numidia. Because uh, Egypt, Egypt, the Egyptian AI always like expands super, super fast and they're able to pretty much like take their objectives fairly quickly, even like right when you're pretty much like very close to finishing yours and they can just like win the campaign and you lose like right then and there and it it sucks so we're not going to be doing that there's also little bits of uh tidbits that you can read um yeah you know what i'm actually i'll read this for you guys just uh to start us off and you know get us set into the mood of what we're going to be doing the city of rome had a violent foundation one that mirrors much of the political and military infighting that happens between the great families of Rome. Romulus murdered Remus for jumping over the walls of the city and then named himself king and renamed the city in his own honor. The patrician families of Rome claim descent from the adventurers, exiles, and warriors Romulus recruited to help establish his city. The Scipii should be numbered among these ancient bloodlines. They are not, perhaps, of quite the first rank, although this in itself means that they are keen to prove themselves the equal of any other Romans, but they are certainly among the Optimates, the aristocracy of the city, and have been for many generations. They are important people, used to the privilege of rank and the usages of power both to further Rome's ambitions and that of their own family. They have also produced able politicians and generals, the two go hand in hand in Rome, as political success rarely comes without success on the battlefield. They are, however, unusual in a couple of respects for a Roman family of the old ways. Firstly, they are extravagantly wealthy. Wealth is one thing, and this always brings power with it, but their use of wealth has sometimes surprised more conservative Romans, and Romans are nothing if not conservative. The Scipii also have a taste for Greek learning and culture, again, something that surprises and concerns the conservative elements. Nevertheless, despite these un-Roman ways, the Scipii have the political skills and military competence to make their family greatest in Rome, and possibly the rulers of the known world. They may only directly control a couple of provinces in Italy and Sicily, but their ambitions are boundless and realistic. Alright, let's dive right in. My family, the House of Scipii, are beloved of the gods. A proud boast, but true, all the same. In return, we have served Rome, ruled well, led her armies to glory. It has cost us dearly, despite the love of the gods. Sometimes the hatred of men is stronger. Our dead lie in many graves, put there by Carthaginian swords, and a few Greek ones. Even Roman blades have taken Scipii lives. That we do not forget, or forgive. So, now our time has come. The spirits of the dead cry out for blood. I will lead our family in this undertaking. The gods will grant us vengeance. When Sicily is Roman, when Carthage is crushed, when the other Roman families are gone, when the world is mine, then I will stand before the gods and be worthy of their love, and worthy to rule Rome. Okay. So, we have a Senate mission assigned. Take Syracuse, we can do it in ten, turn, ten turns, but if we do, we will be greatly rewarded. Okay, so, welcome to the campaign map. This is pretty much, like, where we'll spend most of our time doing, managing our cities, building our armies, and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, in terms of initial goals, make Sicily Roman, and then we'll probably, if we can... We'll move on to Sardinia and Corsica, see if we can take those as well. I would like to try to deny the other two, or the other Roman factions as much uh, expansion and room as possible, but, you know, not super realistic to you know, just have our armies go out on all these different fronts. One thing to kind of note, 
this whole setup with all these different Roman families all spread out, very unrealistic uh, in terms of what would actually be happening. It would pretty much just be the Senate controlling everything and I guess the families sort of being minor influencers, but eventually it would turn into like a different sort of political factions uh, vying for power and then eventually the Empire happens. But this is a sort of way to make you end up controlling Rome and have like a civil war between these various groups. So, um, first things first, we should kind of look uh, at our settlements and our armies and see what we have. Uh, uh, yeah, and the reason that we can see these guys and like not other factions is because we're allied with them. Uh, we are allied with the other Roman factions at the beginning and, you know, they pretty much have our backs in terms of like you know, if we go to war with another faction, they will too, but it's pretty much just in, like, name only. But one of the cool things is they don't drag us into wars, which is very welcome and very helpful. So, in Capua, we have our faction heir and a couple units of Hastati. Another Hastati here and another family member led by our boy Gaius. Gaius and Julius. Uh, another really cool thing about this game is that... Uh, each individual general has their own personality and they have their own traits and they'll have followers and stuff like that so our uh, boy Juliana Scipio here our faction heir he's a pretty good commander uh, this man has a basic talent for command although he sometimes lack confidence lacks confidence but we can build that up and he'll be able to get more command the more battles he's in and the more victories he wins so that confidence is going to build up and he will become an excellent commander if we use him that way. And that is exactly probably what we're going to do. Uh, he also has some influence in the Senate. Uh, that will come useful for uh, positions and stuff like that. That influence grows with the territory we expand and the victories he accomplishes. In terms of retinue, they give you bonuses. Uh, like we have a drill master here. So we get a plus 25% movement points and gives armies the ability to force march which is really good uh, a 10% discount on unit training costs that's also hugely hugely important we definitely so this guy is a good commander we know this so we want him leading armies in the field and you know on the front lines training troops and stuff like that Gaius Scipio same here. We he but he's got a bit more influence than our uh, our faction heir. But yeah, he's a natural born general. So this he again a very 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 good general. We want him leading armies too. We'll probably put them together initially and then split them off into their own things. But he's authoritarian. Uh, and plus he's sharp. So. Yeah, it gives us some authority with the Senate, but he does have a negative effect on public order, so we want to keep him out of cities as much as possible. General. Then we have Quintus here. He's got... he's average. 35, not that great of a commander, but he does have quite a bit of influence in the Senate, so that's pretty, pretty cool. And then our factionaire Cornelius Scipio he's pretty much a strong all-rounder has some fairly good influence he's very good he's pretty good at managing uh, being an administrator too which uh, we might actually bring him back to our capital uh, just might see yeah you can hit this button and then you can see the details of the settlement so how much income you get from trade Taxes and farms compared to Masana here. Trade, taxes, and. F uh, well, the administration gives us a little bit more of a bonus. Hmm. Okay, so. I think I know what we're going to do. Uh, we might keep Quintus here. Uh, pretty much just to govern a settlement and help maintain some public order, but I don't think we're really going to be using him much for battles. 
we're going to bring Cornelius back home, I think, to manage the capital. And we're going to bring Julianus and Gaius. And we're going to, we are definitely going to send them down here to Sicily. And just for, yeah, I don't want to lower the tax rate, but I'll recruit some town watch just to kind of get some uh, public order. Okay, so you kind of have to worry about if your settlements are happy right now. Um, red, not good. Not good. This means that if we were not to do anything, uh, the settlement will start rioting next turn. That means buildings are going to get damaged. Uh, garrison troops are going to take casualties from, you know, suppressing the people. Like, they're getting, like, you know, injured and killed. And, yeah, like, buildings are going to get damaged or burned, you know, uh, from the people being all super pissed off at us. But hopefully that will change it. Green is good. Green is pretty much what you want. That means, like, your people are happy. They're content. Yellow means... You know, they're not super pissed off, but they're not, like, happy. You know, uh, public order is in the middle. Blue means, you know, the people are starting to get fairly unhappy, and you, there is something that you need to address. Uh, yeah, uh, ship's nothing too special. We just have a couple bireams here. But, yeah, there's no really, like, big naval combat or and much tricks to it. It's just build more, build better ships once you're able to. Uh, ships are kind of expensive. Like, if I was playing the Julii, for instance, I don't think I'd ever... I'd keep my ships, and I'd just build more troops and expand in. But they will become very important to us as the Julii, because, you know, we we, we are kind of spread out in terms of our faction, and we're going to have to, like, land into Africa. So the navy is actually going to be something of a priority. But, yeah, we'll have an army with, like, three... With, like, three generals, that's pretty good, in my opinion, at least. Alright, so let's go and build some things. Now, in terms of what to build here in Kapua, I don't think we're really going to be recruiting from here too much. So, I'm going to build a port. Uh, ports generate a, a lot of money. And then once this port's done, we'll build a trader. Uh, and, uh, yeah, for Masana... Uh, you know, just so we can start retraining and recruiting Hestadi, I think we will also or just build a militia barracks here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to... Okay, so yeah, uh, I forgot to kind of go over this. Besides generals, we also have agents that we can use. Uh, this guy up here in the toga, uh, Quintus uh, Cacius or Cacus, he is our diplomat. So we send him to other factions to negotiate trade, alliances, uh, map information if we want to see what's going on and where they are, kind of, or like even buy settlements off of people or broker peace, peace deals, you know. Uh, this is pretty much what he does. Spies. Spies can infiltrate cities. And they can spy on armies. Like, so you, I can pretty much see what buildings he has here in Syracuse as well as the troops that he has. Uh, can we... Yeah, uh, we can't really... We don't really know too much of Dionysios of Sparta's traits. But yeah, uh, our spy is pretty good and he can infiltrate cities. So I think we might actually do that. Uh, spies also have a chance of opening gates. Yeah, we have a 32% chance that they will open the gates if we attack. That could be pretty useful. In fact, I might just go ahead and just the besiege the city right now. Um, yeah, build like a ram, ladder, and a tower. Maybe, maybe a ladder and 
Yeah, we're yeah for now. We'll just we'll build those. I think the last thing that I built is a is a uh, like a sapper tunnel. They are like you you send a unit down there to like dig underneath the walls and it like collapses a part of the wall. It's pretty cool. Okay. I think that's pretty much... Oh, no, we haven't even... Oh, God, yeah, I haven't even built anything. Um, You know, we'll be taking Syracuse. Yeah, we'll build another port here. And we'll also increase the tax rate a little bit just to increase our money. And, yeah, we are now at war with the Greek cities. But once we take Syracuse, this guy here, um, Diodorus of Gala, he's going to... You know, broker a peace deal and, you know, we'll just have Carthage to pretty much deal with for the next little while. Alright, yeah, uh, other things to kind of go over. Uh, this is our faction overview and shows us how many regions we have, how many years uh, we have to complete the objective. So we have around like 300 years to uh, win the game. It shouldn't take us too long. Like, I don't think I've ever gone to like AD in this game like it's always like I've always just won the game pretty much in BC so yeah our expenditure is a little high so we are gonna be losing a little bit of money and yeah uh, diplomacy screen so you can see the overview like what factions are allied with which and who they're at war with uh, the Senate the Senate is very important, at least for the early to around mid-game, because the, these, the Senate gives you missions to go and, like, take other settlements or do other things, like, uh, try to, like, get, like, uh, diplomacy with some other faction or, uh, you know, uh, or even, like, annexing settlements, stuff like that. Uh, the Senate policy uh, basically is like the Senate standing on other factions. Like, okay, for instance, like they're standing on Macedon. Uh, so the senators note with approval that war with these people is currently far from your thoughts. The Senate doesn't really want us to declare war on these people because we don't really have any borders with Macedon. They wish to impress upon us that in the interests of the Senate and people warm that of Rome, sorry, friendly diplomatic relations should be established. So the Senate wants us and the other Roman factions to become a bit more friendly with the Macedonians. So we might go and do that for them. It's not necessarily a mission for us, but, you know, might increase our standing with them a bit more. Or as for like Carthage, uh, you know, they claim... Uh, that, that these people are not to be considered friends of Rome. Uh, their claims of territory, freedom, and independence should be disputed at every conceivable opportunity. So, yeah, the Senate wants us to be at war with Carthage and the Greeks and the Gauls. That, those are pretty much the three main ones that we're pretty much going to be fighting. Uh, yeah, like other factions like the Germans or like the British or Armenians... Uh, you know, we don't even really know about them at all, uh, but they don't, like, you know, fairly just neutral standing. We don't really know or care about them. They probably don't as well, but, you know, uh, diplomatic situations might change once we get closer to them. Yeah, and then this is just the missions tab where we can see, um, you know, like where our missions, we only just have the one. And then the Senate floor. This is also very important. This just kind of shows us our current standing with the Senate. So, you know, we kind of do things like complete missions and, you know, kind of keep in good relations that the Senate wants us to do. Our standing in the Senate will increase. And the people, the standing with the people becomes very important around the late game, especially once the Civil War hits. You want to have the support of the people rather than the Senate. And you can pretty much do that by... You know, doing as what the Romans would do uh, in real life, bread and circuses mainly. So, you know, building like gladiatorial arenas and chariot races, like hippodrome arenas and hosting races and games and keeping taxes low. That's what the people want. They want low taxes and entertainment to keep them distracted and happy. Uh, other than that, lists, you know, just shows us how many 
settlements and agents we have, faction rankings. This doesn't really matter until later. Uh, Senate offices, it shows you what factions have who in in office. We actually have a couple Greeks as Praetor at Aedile. Ugh. Absolutely barbaric. Absolutely, absolutely horrendous. And have a friggin' broody eye in as Quaster. God. Horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. And yeah, our family tree, you know, just shows us this will expand and get crazy as the game goes on because it will be like adopting like competent guys and marrying them into the family and stuff like that. We can also change our faction air if we want to. Gaius is a pretty promising lad, but Julianus is good. Julianus is good and hey, he's got two sons already. One should be coming of age fairly soon. The other not so much. This guy's got a daughter and a son um yeah, kind of a sad thing you can't really do much with daughters in this game you can really only marry them off to like generals and stuff like that well that you like you can't even like diplomatically marry them for alliances or anything Orders. you know just generals would be like hey i want to marry your daughter and then it's like a yes or a no it, it, I, I always try to like give them you know like someone of roughly around their age once they come of age you know like if she's like 16 i'll want to marry her to like an 18 or like a not like 18 or like a 17 year old or if she's like you know 19 20 ish somewhere around there like if it's like some like 50 year old guy that's like hey i want to marry you i'm gonna be like no no that's gross get out of here Okay, uh, without further ado, I've been rambling on for like close to 30 minutes. Sorry, guys. Uh, let's end the turn. Yeah, that's pretty standard. They're not coming out to fight. I might change that. Have these guys here. And yeah, get the other guys here. Let's, because uh, I really don't want to fight a siege battle. Okay. Oh, we got friggin' rebels. Really? Uh. I got rebels. Uh, they, like, they're not gonna do stuff. They, I think they might just be disrupting some trade, I think. But yeah, we will have to go and take care of them. Shouldn't be too hard. Let's see if that's done it. Oh, yeah. Standard, I forgot to move my diplomat. That happens all the time. I don't really use diplomats much, especially when playing as the Romans. And hey, uh, yeah, the Roman Senate are starting their big old conga line. I don't think I'm actually going to bother negotiating or talking with the Gauls at all. I mean, like the... Julii are pretty much about to start kicking them out fairly soon. Imperator, march, joining forces. Okay. All right. Settlements under siege. Can we? Orders, engage the enemy. Okay. Let's see. We got a ram and a ladder. So, so we can build like. Four more, well, six more siege engines technically if we wanted to use them, but like, not really gonna put these guys up to like assault walls or anything. Probably get two towers and a ladder. That, yeah, that should do it. And that should all be done in one turn because we have, uh, the reason it took so long for us to build those two things there. Is pretty much because okay well we got our ports done let's build some traders and get some more money they're fairly cheap too where's this guy going why can we take you out of the settlement we can uh, they, they should be happy once we put some more town watch in there Increase the tax rate a little. 
And we'll besiege them for one more turn. Alright. Okay, just so nothing happens. I do want to just make a quick save real quick. Oh, I already have a... Uh, yeah, I guess I did... Yeah, I did a trial run earlier just to see if everything was running correctly. So yeah, let's go and assault. Uh, so yeah, this battle is pretty much stacked in our favor. We outnumber him a lot, but you know, it's a siege battle and hot plates do not F around, so... Wow, our general actually has, like, phenomenal command right now. Oh, yeah. No, never mind, he's gonna have a speech. I have won great renown through leading men to victory. I see no reason to change the habits of a lifetime today. There stand the Greeks, ready to fight or die. Today, I think we should send as many of them as possible to Hades. They stand alone. No friend has come to this place to die for them. Does this not say something about their honor? They're standing among nations? This army includes fully half of all our warriors. It is a mighty host, and little can stand against it. Our foes certainly have rumbling guts at the very thought that you are marching against them. Remember that as you cut them down. They have been lulled into a false sense of security by a few feet of defensive wall, as if that will protect them. We outnumber them comfortably, but that should not be seen as an excuse not to fight hard. Why let your brother carry your burden? Those fools have never fought against me before. I hope to give them a nasty surprise. All right. I'm not going to be doing that for, like, all the speeches, or like every battle, I mean. We're gonna have our Velites just go and run and get to that tower. And let's see, we just have Peltasts. There. Okay, gonna just put my boys on fire at will. Okay. Gonna have these ladders start going over there. The engineers are digging. Soon the walls will come crashing down. With the favor of the gods! Uh, okay. Alright, and let's begin the assault. Bring our... I seriously, seriously hate sieges. Like, they always 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 end up becoming just huge slog fests and meat grinders and you end up losing just like a bunch of guys on like the walls and in like choke points especially fighting against you know hoplites yeah these guys can be pretty deadly they have some of their most elite right there Yeah, once once we get some like onagers, well, like catapults, that's what they're called here in this game. Uh, like to to like start just bashing walls down with like stones, it should make our jobs a little bit easier. But yeah, it's it's kind of realistic in the sense that sieges would be 
like assaults like on sieges would be like super costly affairs you know because like gen you know generally what would happen would be like armies would just sort of like encircle the city you know make sure that no supplies are getting to it and then you know eventually like either either an assault would happen once the enemy's like weakened enough or once uh once the like once the garrison surrenders you know because they've run out of food and they're pretty much starving and needing yeah yeah like it can get sieges especially about cities with a lot of people can get fairly rough let's just leave it at that for for there yeah these these towers suck they always have uh, like they, they always fire on you even if troops aren't even close to them so we pretty much have to take these just to keep uh, like to keep our losses at a minimum uh, god I hope the tower doesn't burn because the siege equipment can burn from just too many uh, arrows attacking it but it should be okay all right, yeah, we're fine now. It's just kind of shooting our, yeah. See, like it's shooting our guys. We're at, we had like 160. We've already close, like Ready lost nearly on. like 20 dudes. The siege towers are at the walls. Now the real fight begins. Okay, yeah, run, double time it, guys. Ah, jeez. Just all crowd in there. Just all crowd in there. Yeah. Okay, the wall's crashing down. That's that's good. Unfortunately, we didn't really inflict any casualties on these hoplites. Oh, we did kill some of them, I think. Yeah. Yeah, like one or two. Okay, walls are down. Cool. Have proved themselves once more. The walls are broken thanks to our minds. You know what? Screw it. Drop them. Drop them, boys. We're going to get ready for an attack and attack the wall. We're going to forlorn hope it. I'm going to just increase time a little bit. And I think we're going to get our... Archers, yeah, you guys can run. Just hurry up time a little bit more. Okay, go get in range. Just start inflicting some casualties on these militia hoplites. If you can. If you don't mind. Alright. Oh no. Pull them back. Pull them back a little bit. We can't we can't retrain our archers just yet. We don't have the milit we don't have the infrastructure for it. So I'd rather not lose a lot of these guys if I can. Alright, guys, just, just go in. We got the numbers. And you're Histadi, you're Sons of Rome. Go, 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 go. Rome is mother to us all. Make sure she is not ashamed. Uh, drop the stuff. Yeah, see, we're still even taking fire from this tower here. We're gonna get in. Yeah, we should make short work of the Peltasts and archers with these guys. Our soldiers have captured the walls. Now is the time to press on and Go. capture this place. All right. We're just going to have you guys go in. Attack their sides if you can. Let 
these guys are militia hoplites, so they're probably not. Yeah, see, they're they're already broken. Go. Pile in. Pile in. Yeah, it's there. We're going to get in with this these guys and Yeah, okay. No, we're we're doing okay so far against these guys. Against the regular hoplites, but we might get the cavalry in to sweep around if we can. Now, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Get over there, please. Don't attack them. Get over there. No, no. Ah. What I was trying to do was I was trying to... Yeah, the pathfinding in this game can kind of be crummy. Oh, man. We're just cutting through these guys. Let's get in there. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty much attacking the flank of their phalanx. Yeah, our guys here are kind of taking a bit more losses that are facing it. But yeah, um, attacking a phalanx head-on, not smart, but it sides. You know, that's the big brain move. That's what you want to do. I was trying to, I was trying to get one of the guys to kind of loop around and get it from the rear and just totally envelop it. But we've we've already pretty much done that. So yeah, these. Yeah, they're, they're routing, they're broken. Yeah, we've pretty much wiped out this unit here. They're sending in some more militia hoplites. We're actually going to put these guys up on the walls. Ah, crap. We've taken we're taking some casualties on our archers. Let's pull, let's pull these guys back. Damn it, I didn't want to... We're firing our... Our boys are firing their uh, pilum, the short spears. Oh, these guys are losing a little bit. You guys need to get up on the walls and quickly stop being, stop being dumb. Go, go, go. Get you guys into guard formation. Oh yeah, we pretty much like nearly wiped out this unit too. Yeah, they'll be... Yeah, point blank. Woo! Boom, look at them, look at them, look at them drop. Alright. Alright, and we've captured the gateway, so that means that they'll be firing on their own troops. Let's get our cavalry in. All right, and we've broken the Peltists. And there's just about 70 archers left, but they're wavering. Yeah, these guys are going to fight to the death up on the walls. Wow, this this one's actually... This siege is going way better than than what I did on my test run. Like, it uh, it did not go well. Let's just say a lot of, a lot of my own guys died. We're just going to also bring in the other uh, Hastati as reserve. But yeah, now these guys now have sandwiched them. They're uh, the guy. The walls are kind of broken, and that like if your troops are out, they're just gonna like stay there and just fight to the death. So you know they're just gonna like carve through, carve through these Greek boys over here. How are, how are you boys doing? Okay. Hmm. Which way to go? Which way to go? This way. This way seems like it leads more directly into the courtyard. Okay. Um...
also gonna have you guys come in too and start doing some damage. Actually, you guys stop right there. That general's bodyguard there is very, very dangerous, especially to the Hastati. They might seem like they're heavy infantry, but they're not. They're light infantry, LARPing as heavy infantry. So... Yeah, General's Bodyguard, no matter what faction they are, they are incredibly overpowered. So we're going to try to get ours and just overwhelm them with cavalry superiority. Uh, you know, just seeing all these horses might break these guys too. I hope. Yeah, like, you know, common form of warfare in this time period 101, don't. No, not the general, not the general, don't, not, not the general, get out of there, don't, don't, don't go into the spears, you idiot. Okay, now you can go into the spears, sir. Alright, yeah, these guys are dead. Alright, here comes their general. Okay, have those Stadi move in. Alright, close in for the kill. Close in for the kill. Get them in a nice meaty horse, sand horse sandwich. Oh yeah, they're dropping. They're dropping like flies. Yeah, and we got the general. Ah, it's so satisfying. Alright, and he's dead. All right. Yeah, there's only two. The other general's bodyguard is no longer a threat. Let's go in, boys. Let's go in. Get in there. Also, no, don't attack the spearman cavalry, please. Yeah, just, yeah, just attack, just attack that horseman there. Yeah, get rid of him. Then, like, wheel around. Reel around, reel, reel around here. Yeah, that's that's satisfying. That's satisfying. And yes, please, please run, please, please run. Here comes our other infantry, our reserves coming in. Yeah, we've we've won this already, boys. Siege of Syracuse, best day of my life. Let's go for Rome. Charge! Oh, they're going at. Oh, they're going after the general. Haha, <laughs> the fools! The fools! Yeah, that's right. Be distracted. Be distracted. No! What did I do? What have I done? Go! Fall back! Fall back. Yeah, see, that's why you don't want to have them charge in. Oh, thankfully we didn't lose a general. That would have been absolutely devastating. Get those hoplites. Get those spear boys. Get those pointy stick boys.
Oh, wait! Oh, one of our Hastati has routed. Okay. All right, yeah, we need to we need to wheel around here. Yeah, that's this is what you want to do with hoplites and spearmen. Attack them in the rear. Get them in the rear. Yeah, alright, this is this is pretty much over. And hey, we got twenty-five minutes left in the battle. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad for our first taste of victory. All Rome will be amazed at such a all right. the day is ours. Okay. Yeah, so they've killed about close to 500 of ours, but we got around pretty much all their whole army. Alright. So, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> to anyone uh, watching this, I apologize, but this game makes me a complete genocidal jerk. And, you know, they have a pretty bad public order bonus just don't even bother doing this exterminate populace always uh as shitty as it sounds yeah um and we're gonna start building a barracks here so we can retrain those hastati because yeah we can only just recruit town watch and yeah like i'm going into battle with just town watch in my army you know what i mean uh yeah walls are a little bit damaged obviously but yeah, um, if you enslave the population, the population gets redistributed to, like, all your settlements. You get, like, some boosts of income from it. We might do it, like, on one or two settlements, but yeah, like, if you do it so much, you'll get, like, gladiator and slave revolts in your cities. It's just not worth dealing, so if, if it's green, you know, hey, go ahead, occupy the settlement peacefully. That's usually what I do, but... You know, uh, blue, red, uh, you know, just exterminate the, <laughs> yeah, assert your dominance, essentially. And hey, um, so yeah, Julianus has gotten some more command for doing that. So now he's bloody. This man has, enjoys the sight of blood, particularly that of his enemies. Cool. Alright guys, I think that's going to be it for this episode. I think I'm going to call it here. Once again, this has been Brother Man Games. Thank you all so much for watching. And be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. In the next episode, we'll be furthering our goals here on Sicily and expanding into Carthage. In fact, just before we leave, going to send our spy to spy on the Carthaginians. And yes, they are a pretty viable target. They've only just got a general here and some skirmishers, so... Yeah, should be an easy, should be an easy conquest maybe. But yeah, alright. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.